Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today I will be showing you the color scheme and also be talking about the lore behind the Adeptus Sororitas Order of the Evan Chalice. <laughs> So, the Order of the Ebon Chalice's color scheme is quite straightforward. If they are wearing armor, that armor is black. If they are wearing cloth of some kind, that cloth is white. And if there is trimming, either on the cloth or in small details, as you like, whatever would make it look good, I think, uh, it is red, blood red, as that represents sacrifice. As well, their hair, if you can see it, is generally dyed white in honor of their matriarchs whose hair were bleached white by whatever it was that they saw or heard in the god emperor's throne. This model was primed wraithbone and I'm going to start off with the black. The, I used black templar contrast paint initially and a citadel base brush to apply most of the black switching over to an extra small artificer brush by citadel uh, once i needed to get into the itty bitty details i started by doing her boots black the ebon chalice artifact that she's holding the ebon chalice represents the truth that the matriarchs encountered when they visited the god emperor no one knows exactly what was said there since if there were any records, those records have been lost. But it was so great that it caused Alicia Dominique, leader of the Daughters of the Emperor at the time, to slay the Ecclesiarch Gauge Van Dier as a traitor to the Emperor. Any mistakes I make, I cover with Wraithbone, um, since the Wraithbone spray is the same color and Wraithbone is very good at covering up um, dark colors, unlike some other creams. Wraithbone works great for coverage. I'm coloring her bracers black, her gun holster black, though her gun itself is going to be that blood red, since the weapons of the Order of the Ebon Chalice are known to be painted blood red. To create that blood red color, I'm using Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint by Citadel. I'm also coloring the backpack all black. The great thing about Black Templar is that it leaves all of the edges um, grey instead of black. So it gives a bit of a highlight, all on its own. You can give shadows to that black just by applying another layer of Black Templar just in places once that first layer is dried. She also has uh, some of her armor peeking out um, in front of her as well as prayer beads. The prayer beads are generally also black. Now since the black is done and drying, I moved on to using the Blood Angels Red on any details that I thought would work as red. If you have ever seen the Triumph of St. Catherine, there are six sisters there. Each one I'm painting the color of the order that they uh, represent. So yes, there will be a video on each one. Uh, for all of the metal, I'm using the Citadel's uh, base color uh, Retributor Armor. Its coverage is very good. It's a thicker paint, so you want to thin it down slightly while you're, when you're using it so that you can uh, cover everything you want it to cover without it getting all gloppy. But it has very good coverage, so it should be straightforward to use. Any details that I see that I think would look good in gold I do. So that's the fleur-de-lis on the ebon chalice, her crown, the candle on the back of her backpack, just that sort of thing. For her face and for her hands, I'm using Co Citadel Contrast Dark Oath Flesh, which is a nice pale fleshy tone. Now I'm going to go ahead with Elvic Flesh and and the dark oath flesh, mix it together pretty evenly and put that on the candles for a cream color for the candles. Just the candlesticks. For the fire color, I'm using a mix of Moon Yellow Gamer by Vallejo and Apothecary White contrast paint. 
as well as adding a little bit of the elfic flesh just until I get the color I want which is like a pale banana yellow and I'm going to cover the flame entirely with that when I added the black to the ebon chalice I actually uh, added it to some of the flame as well and that was on purpose because I figured the skull that's actually flaming in there um, should be black and sooty just a little extra touch now the very first layer of white on her vestments is not actually going to be white at all it's going to be a mix of apothecary white and Vallejo Mecca color light blue mostly apothecary white with some of that blue and apply it all over her vestments being careful where it pools and letting it dry completely before I go ahead and do the next layer I'm going to use Griffhound Orange to start um, bringing life to the candles only on the bottom half of the candle am I adding that Griffhound Orange leaving the yellow at the top a same thing with her uh, flaming chalice just in places to make it look fiery here and there fire it up and then I'm going to use more of that banana yellow that I made to kind of um, add some paleness to the very tips of the candles such that the flame is um, brightening those areas now I'm going to add yellow over anything that seems like it would be hit very brightly by that fire now this is supposed to be daylight so the fire's light isn't going to extend too far out in comparison to the day's light so only the very closest things that are directly facing that fire will I add yellow and touches here and there of the griffhound orange to represent the bright light of the fire hitting off pieces of her armor and um, her crown. I'm not going to be doing it as much on the on her vestments because her vestments aren't going to pick up that light the same as something more reflective like her armor and her crown. Now for the next layer of white. So we're going to use Ghost Grey by Vallejo along with more of the light blue by Vallejo. Mix it together pretty evenly at this point. Okay, maybe a little bit more blue. Plus water to water it down. And layer it on pretty lightly all over. It's transparent enough that the shadows will stay shadowy and the lights will become lighter. Now the next layer is going to be uh, mostly the ghost gray with just a little bit of the previous color mixed into it. And that's how I will be going. I'll be basically adding a lighter color to the previous mix, lay that on, add more of the lighter color to the previous mix, lay that on, and so forth until I get the white and shadows looking right to me. And I'm doing this all while it's wet, so one would call this wet blending. Note that I have my brush sideways uh, when I'm doing this. It keeps um, your bristles from going into any of the folds if you have it sideways. The next white that I'm going to be using is Model Color White by Vallejo. And now I'm actually moving the brush upwards since it'll start coming to a point and I want it to be coming to a point as the folds get tighter I guess I would say. I also have a damp brush right next to me so if it does happen to get into a fold I can just pull it right on out. This, uh, these layers are transparent enough that I can do that. As I'm making these grey cloaks white let's go over the Order of Elven Chalice and what they're all about. So there are six major order militants. Um, but that wasn't always the case. Back before Adeptus Sororitus, 
were created. Sisters of Battle were called the Daughters of the Emperor, and then the traitor convinced them that he was doing the Emperor's work and they became the Brides of the Emperor. Well, when Alicia Dominica slew that traitor, the new Adeptus Sororitis were made. And at that time, they created four orders. One being the Order of the Ebon Chalice, which Alicia Dominica herself was the matriarch and founder of. So, the Order of the Ebon Chalice follow her creeds, her passions. They consider her perfection and they strive to be the same in both their faith and in their military prowess. The Order of the Ebon Chalice became a sigil for everyone else. They followed the original doctrines of the daughters of the Emperor, adhering to these religiously with the exception of the addition of modern armor and weapons. And as I said, the color scheme remains the same. The only thing that has changed from the Daughters of the Emperor to the Order of the Ebon Chalice is that most everyone's hair is now dyed white in honor of Saint Dominica. After letting all of those layers dry, she is looking like this. And the next step is to um, add some layers to all of the black and fix up where the white might have touched it. Fixing up her boot that I got white on. Fixing up the red that I got white on. And giving it another layer to bring out the red even further. And improving the blue. This is just, yes, this is mostly just the light blue that I'm adding to creases to further emphasize the shadows of her dress, her robe. Um, also creating shadows where originally they weren't any, in rather transparent layers though. It has been watered down. Oh yes, and on the back I added some white over top of the Black Templar, and then added um, several different colors uh, on those little plates that you see. Here I'm just adding touches of white to make it kind of look like a teeny weeny computer screen on that green section there. I used some orc flesh green, some blood terrors red for the middle, and griffound orange for the little orange buttons just adding a little bit of detail in. Now as this girl is part of the Triumph of Saint Catherine, um, there may be some shadows and highlights details that I'm going to omit from this particular model so that I can better suit it towards um, the entire tri uh, Triumph of Saint Catherine model when I complete it. But this is basically what she will look like when she's done going to add a little bit of highlighting to the red just by adding a flesh tears red to the uh, elfic flesh along with a little bit of griffhound orange just to get a red highlight color and with great great trepidation since I just finished all the white I am adding red to the very 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 tiny buttons that go up her skirt. I am happy to say I didn't trip up once. And as this was a saved brush, you can check out my how to save brushes video. I was pretty proud of that fact. And there she is, ready to add to the Triumph of St. Catherine. Uh, this is just a base that I laid down so that she'd look a little bit more spiffy. If you're using a Battle Sister to paint in this uh, color scheme, you're going to see a lot more black and a lot less white. But as I said, the armor goes black, the vestments go white, the detailing go red, and your weapons go red. Oh, and you probably will have some gold here and there for bling. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and it was useful to you. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!